Welcome back to the Open3D Engine YouTube channel and back to our Pong series. I'm Alex Demarjan, a technical trainer with the AWS Game Tech team. In the previous tutorial, we used script events to create a simple state machine. In this tutorial, we'll begin the process of scripting our ball's movement and explore physics concepts such as physics materials, rigid bodies, and colliders. Without delay, let's begin. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's begin by creating a script that will drive the movement of our ball. On the left-hand side in the Entity Outliner, select your ball. Then, in the Entity Inspector, select the Add Component button. In the Search field, type Script. Below it, select the Script Canvas component. Let's create a new script by clicking on our Open in Script Canvas button, located within the Script Canvas component. Now that we have a script in place, let's return to the editor and further set up our scene with some additional components that we will later control within this script. Save your script as ball underscore movement. Back in our editor, let's add a physics material that will control the amount our ball will bounce around our scene. In the asset editor, select file then open. Next, in the pop-up window, expand both the assets and physics folder. Contained within the physics folder, you'll find a surface type material library. Select it, then click the OK button. This will launch the physics material options within your asset editor. Contained within our physics material, locate and click on the plus symbol. This will add a new default physics material. Scroll down to the bottom of our physics material options list until you locate the default material. Let's change the name of this material to bounds, since we'll be using it to influence the amount of bounds our ball will have. Let's briefly review some of your other physics options. There's dynamic friction, which relates to the amount of friction when our ball is moving. Then there's static friction, which is essentially when our ball is still or not moving. Then there's restitution, which is the amount of friction when our ball collides with another object. So you can think of this as the bounce. Now, all of these have a value essentially from zero, which is no bounce, to one, which is maximum bounce. Since I want a great deal of bounce, I'm gonna change my restitution to one. Then there's friction combined and restitution combined. They each have four options. The default value is average, then there's minimum, which essentially takes into account the smaller of the materials in contact. Then there's maximum, which is the larger of the values when the materials are in contact, which is what we're gonna use. Lastly, we have multiply, which is the product of the values of the two physics objects when they collide. We'd like to grab the larger value when our ball collides with our paddle. So we're gonna go ahead and set our restitution value to maximum. Lastly, we have the display color of the physics material when we're in debug view. Let's lock in the changes we made to our physics material by going to file, then save. Let's take a moment here and take a look at what would happen if we did not have a collider on our ball. Currently, if our ball was in motion, it would simply pass through our paddle object. In order to have our ball detect and react to collisions in our scene, we need to add a physics collider to our ball. Notice in this example that the ball is stopped by the paddle since both objects have a collider component attached to them. Let's do that now. Back in our scene, make sure our ball is selected in the Entity Outliner. Then, in the right-hand side of the screen, in the Entity Inspector, Click on the Add Component button. In the search field, begin to type Physics. Below the search field, select the PhysX Collider component. In our newly added Physics Collider, look for the Shape field. Click on its drop-down menu. Here you'll see four options. First, you'll see Physics Assets, which are for game objects that do not meet a standard geometric shape like a sphere, a cube, and so on. And then we have sphere, box, and capsule that can be used for both standard and unconventionally shaped game objects. We'll select the sphere option since it best matches the shape of our ball object. Next, we'd like to add our bounce physics material that we created earlier to our collider. Above our shape field, look for the physics material dropdown section. And if it's not already open, expand it. And in the entire object dropdown field, click on the dropdown arrow. Scroll down until you find your bounce physics material and select it. Let's zoom in on our ball to get a better look at how we can edit the shape of our sphere collider. With the ball selected, press the Z key. Once zoomed in, locate and click on the edit button on your sphere collider. If you don't see the sphere collider in your scene, press the toggle and viewport helpers button. Now we can see our sphere collider. If you'd like to adjust the radius of the collider, this can be done in the radius field. Notice on this particular object, when I enter a value larger than its current preset number of 0.5, the collider's radius expands. And when I enter a value less than one, like 0.5, you can see it decreases in size. Let's exit our collider's edit mode by pressing the done button. Now that we have a collider that will stop our ball from moving through other collision enabled objects, I'd like to use a rigid body component to apply physics properties like gravity and bounds to our ball. 
Let's take a brief look at two examples of how spheres behave with a rigid body component attached and our bounce material applied. In this example, you can see the rigid body provides gravity pulling our ball down to our ground plane. But notice that the amount of bounce is very minor. In our second example, we've applied the bounce material that we created earlier. Notice that both the amount of gravity and bounce have been affected by this and are continuous. Let's apply this knowledge back in our scene. In the upper right-hand corner, click on the Add Component button. In the search field, begin to type rigid. Below it, select the physics rigid body component. Since I want the ball object to stay static and not fall to the ground plane, let's uncheck gravity enabled. Below our gravity enabled option, uncheck compute mass. We do this because we'd like to have better control of the overall mass of our ball. Feel free to experiment with this value. I'd like my ball to be a lighter weight, so I'll enter one for the value. Now let's return to our script canvas editor and set up the functionality within our ball movement script. First, we'd like to check if we're currently in a game started state. If not, we don't want our ball to move during our start menu. Drag our game state node onto our graph and select receive game state. Next, let's use our trusted equal to comparison node to check whether or not we are in the game started state. Right click in our graph and enter equals equals into the search field then once it appears, select the equal to node. Position it accordingly and connect the output pin of your game state node to the in pin of our equal to node. Let's check if we are currently in the game started state by dragging our state pin into the equal to node value A pin. Now we want to adjust the value in the value B parameter so that it reads game started. Next, once we register that it is true that we are in the game started state, we want to send a bit of force to the x-axis of our ball, moving it towards our paddle. A great node for this is the Linear Impulse node. Right-click on your script canvas graph and begin to type Apply Linear. Once Apply Linear Impulse appears in the options, select it and position it accordingly on the graph. Connect the true pin from our equal to node into the in pin of our Apply Linear Impulse node. Now, depending on the factors you set up in your ball's rigid body, you may have to adjust the amount of force you enter into the x-axis. Let's begin with two and adjust the values accordingly for your gameplay type. Lastly, let's group and label our nodes. Highlight all of the nodes located within your script canvas graph, then right-click and select group. Since this particular graph utilizes both physics and input, you can select the group type that best fits you. I'm gonna go ahead and select physics. Next, let's label our graph group ball movement. Save your script, and let's return to our editor to see all of our hard work in action. Back in our editor, let's run our game by pressing Ctrl G. Now hit the Enter key on your keyboard to run our game. Great, now our ball is moving towards our paddle, but there's a potential issue. Notice that the ball moves through our paddle. This can make for a fairly boring pong game if we can't hit the ball back to our opponent. So let's add colliders to both of our paddles. Hit the Escape key to exit play mode. Select Paddle 01. Notice that the components in our Entity Inspector are taking up a lot of room. Select the Compress Component Content arrow on several of your components to collapse them. Then, select the Add Component button and type Physics in the search field. Once our PhysX Collider Component option appears, select it. We're going to make one additional change to our collider, and that's the change its shape parameter from Physics Asset to Box. This will change its collider shape to match the shape of our paddle. Again, if you don't see our collider in your scene, Click on the Toggle Viewport Helpers button. Next, we'll save some time by copying and pasting Paddle01's collider onto Paddle02. In Paddle01's Entity Inspector, right-click on the Physics Collider component. From the pop-up menu, select Copy Component. Next, in the Entity Outliner, select Paddle02. Then return to its Entity Inspector and right-click and select Paste Component. Awesome. You should now have a Physics Collider on both of your paddles. Let's run our game again. Once running, press Enter. Great, now our ball bounces off both of our paddles. There's one additional change I'd like to make. Notice, if I continuously press the Enter key, I keep adding force to my ball. Let's add another state that will let your game know that we're currently playing and that we no longer want to add force to our ball with the Enter key. Let's do this by returning to Script Canvas to make these changes. Back in Script Canvas, open your Enter to Start Game script. Since I'll be updating our game state through several states such as Game Started, Is In Play, or Has Ended, we should use a string variable that can be easily changed to store our state. Up in the right hand corner in our variable manager, select your create variable button. Then select the string data type. Then rename this variable game state. Since I want this variable to be called once our game has started, let's set its default state to game started. 
In the node inspector, locate our game state parameter. Within it, enter game started for its stored value. Next, let's drag our game state variable from our variable manager into the state parameter of our game state node. This sets game started as its current state. Then once more, from our variable manager, drag our game state variable onto the graph. Select the set game state option. This will allow us to change the variable's value. Drag our set game state node on the connection line between our game state and get canvas nodes. After a moment, it will space out the two nodes to the left and right of it. I'd like to change our state so that it indicates that we are currently in play. So in the set game state variable node, change the string parameter value to game in play. Let's return to our editor and test this out. Run your game and press enter. Notice, like before, it starts our game and sends the initial linear impulse. But if I continuously press the enter key, it does not affect the ball movement at all. There's one last change I'd like to make. Notice that regardless of where the ball hits our paddle, its trajectory stays the same on the x-axis. When our ball collides with other objects in our scene, I'd like it to shift direction on the y-axis, adding a layer of randomization and gameplay difficulty. Let's return to Script Canvas and set this up. Back in Script Canvas, right-click on your graph, and in the search field, type On Graph Start. Under the Timing section, select the On Graph Start node. When utilized, this node will call the series of nodes linked to it the moment the script is activated. Next, drag out the On Graph Start output pin. In the search field, type On Collision. Once it appears, select the Get On Collision Begin event node. This node registers when two collision-enabled objects collide. Once a collision occurs, we'd like to generate a random number that can be later used to change the direction of our ball's y-axis. Within our on collision begin event node, locate the on event pin and drag it out. Once the new menu appears, type random number in its search field. Once the random number option appears, select it. We'd like to generate a random number anywhere between minus three and three, giving us a nice range of values in which to move our ball on the y-axis. So for its min field, enter minus three, and for max, three. Since I want to constrain these values so that they only affect our y-axis, we'll use the Vector3 Create from Values node. Right-click on the graph and in its search field type Create from Values. Once it appears, select it. Connect the random number out pin to the input of our Create from Values node. Next, on our random number node, connect its number pin into the y-axis pin of our Create from Values node. Now, whenever our ball collides with another object, it will send a random number between minus three and three to the y-axis parameter of the Create from Values node. This does not move our ball along the y-axis. For this, let's add another apply linear impulse node. Right-click on the graph and in its search field type apply linear impulse. And once it appears, select it. Connect the random number out pin to the in pin of our apply linear impulse node. Drag the vector three pin from the create from values node into the impulse pin of our apply linear impulse node. Save your script and return to our editor so we can see this in action. Run your game we can see that our ball now switches direction on the y-axis whenever a collision occurs. Notice there's one fundamental issue. Over time, our ball slows to a halt. In many games of this type, the ball should speed up over time, not slow down, adding to the action. Let's return to Script Canvas and remedy this. Back in Script Canvas, let's begin by adding the Get Linear Velocity node. This node will allow us to get the current velocity of our ball as it travels along a specific axis. Right-click on the graph and in its search field, begin to type Get Linear Velocity and once it appears, select it. Hook up the out pin from our impulse node to the in pin of our velocity node. Next, let's multiply our velocity by a given value. Right click on the graph and in its search field, begin to type multiply. And under the vector three subsection, select multiply by number. Hook up the out pin from our velocity node to the in pin of our multiply node. Then connect the velocity pin to the vector three pin of our multiply by number node. Now locate the number field and change its value from zero to 0.2. This will slowly, over time, multiply the speed of our ball by 0.2 every time it collides with another object, increasing its speed. Lastly, let's apply the updated movement back to our various axes of our linear impulse node. We will again create an apply linear impulse node. Once created, connect the out and in pins. Then finally, the vector three pin to our impulse pin. Back in our editor, run your game and press the enter key to start the ball's movement. Notice, once it collides with our paddle, it not only switches movement on the y-axis, but also builds up speed each time it collides with another object. In this tutorial, we began the process of scripting our ball's movement. Now, one last point before we go. O3D is an open source engine, and the O3D community is constantly making important updates. So check back often for more O3D related content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.